time with uh, your software. Okay, what, what I just did there by playing those two music sessions, I'll tell you, I can play music, I can play video, I can do remote file transfer, be on local area network, run DOS and Windows programs at the same time, and I really do it. I think that answers the question there. Yeah, NT gives you all those capabilities also. Uh, purely multitasking, purely multi-threaded. Uh, so you can do multiple things simultaneously. All the input queues are asynchronous and they're all uh, uh, not linked together so that you can do multiple things without locking another application. If you'll notice, it was, uh, there was an hourglass sometimes on the OS2. Uh, what we do instead is when we launch an application, we refer to, well, we, we have a new cursor. It's referred to as a start cursor. So you still have your little cursor and you have a little hourglass drop on the bottom of it. And what, that makes, what that's telling you is that the application is starting. So we're giving you some input and some feedback on the fact that application is starting and then you can go do something else. The front microphone. I have a question for both operating systems. Uh, what about remote control software and floppy tape backup? Okay. Uh, from an NT perspective, uh, let me take the tape backup first. Uh, tape backup software is included in the NT package. Floppy tape backup? Pardon me? Floppy tape. Floppy backup. tape backup and uh, regular tape. Uh, there's floppy backup included and there's tape backup. Floppy included. controlled tape drives. Tape drives that run off the floppy controller. Tape drive that you run off the floppy controller. There are a lot of them out here. Uh, I'm not sure on NT. I'd have to. OS2. There's one called Backmaster. There's one from SciQuest. Um, you had another, there was, there was two parts to that question. Remote control. The remote control. PolyPM has been shipping for over a year in the U.S. and in Europe. OS2 is a lot bigger in Europe. Uh, I got PolyPM on here and it's nice. I take over the whole workplace shell. It's as if I was right there. There's another one called Copycat that just went into beta from Hillgrave Associates. They make hyper access and they just went into beta with them. PolyPM has been shipping for a while. Uh, APPC, um, NetBIOS, um, asynchronous, I can dial up from home and take over, all of them. Thank you. Okay. Uh, NT has all those capabilities. We have uh, remote administration. I can actually change the configuration remotely while the user is still using the package and they don't even realize it. I can also upgrade the operating system remotely. So I can force a new version of the operating system down to the user's desk and the user never knows that it happens. He gets a dialog box that pops up that says, your operating system has been upgraded. Please reboot your machine now. By the way, we've had that in OS2 for about eight months, shipping. <laughs> the rear microphone. This is an OS2 question. Say I'm in a full screen DOS session without using a TSR. Is there a product to hotkey out of it into any application, say on the window or into another full screen? Also, is there a macro language product available for the workplace shell? Okay, first of all, Rex is available for OS2 and it fully exploits the workplace shell and its object-oriented capabilities. It's 32-bit. It's in OS2. Uh, people tell me they absolutely love it. As far as the hotkey capability, I don't think I got your question. I can enable, I got a couple of programs that use control, or, uh, control escape and alt escape. Well, if I do that in OS2, OS2 intercepts it. In OS2's DOS settings, you can say, give this to the DOS program. Right. But I, I'm not sure I got your question. One hotkey. One hotkey. One hot There's software out on CompuServe right now that'll allow one hotkey anywhere in OS2. It's shareware. I think it's 25 bucks. You can assign a hotkey to do darn near anything you want in the workplace shell. Thank no. you. Thank you. The middle microphone. I'm an OS2 user. I've been OS2 user 2.0 for quite some time, 1.3 uh, before that. Still I'm using FAT and just have not trusted uh, HPFS. Uh, what am I going to lose uh, other than the long file names uh, by keeping uh, my file system as FAT? Or okay. is FAT still available? FAT is definitely still available. We now call it super FAT. We've, we've improved its performance significantly. It really is a lot faster, okay? A lot, of my peers, a lot of my peers still use the FAT file system. I went HPFS because in South Florida we get power hits like crazy and I got tired of losing stuff. I also like the long file names. Since I went, I'd say about a year ago, I, there's nothing that doesn't run. All my DOS and Windows programs run. But if I take a DOS diskette and boot it, it can't even find my hard disk. So I have an OS2 diskette. Okay? And you can create that now. Um, downside would be you can't dual boot to pure DOS. 
That's the one downside. Other than that, it's stable. Um, it's, uh, I, I absolutely love it. And I, I, when I poll people in users groups and I say who uses it, they raise, they're adamant. They're lovers of it. Okay? Smaller sector size. I've got icons out here that would take 16 meg on your fat file system. They take 8 meg on mine. 512. Yeah, yeah. The wow. rear microphone. Hi, uh, this question is directed to Dave. Well, first of all, you did a very good presentation. Thank you. And uh, you virtually steal the show. <laughs> well, um, the main concern of uh, not moving to OS2 uh, for me is the the programs that is native to OS2 is so, is so limited. Yeah. And I don't even see any store, uh, software store, have a section of OS2 yeah. software programs. So uh, I want to know how many programs currently available and will be available. Um, I, I just I'm want with, a number. Yeah, and also I hear I want you. I'm know. with you. I'll tell you, right now there are 1,200 OS2 32-bit apps. But if you look at them, it's not something you and I want. It's accounts receivable, accounts payable, billing inventory. Because corporations, Social Security Administration just bought 70,000 copies of OS2 to revamp the Social Security Administration. Prudential, 40,000 copies. Merrill Lynch, 40,000. The corporations are getting the applications. You and I want the fun stuff. I would love to have Excel and Word. Wouldn't you all for OS2? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they're not there yet. I'll tell you that we have a group in IBM that's going out there paying people to write code. It works. What the heck? We're not in the application business and we're not going to compete against them. We're going to give them money and help them and bring them to Boca and teach them how. And it's the chicken and the egg. There's just about three million copies here. There'll be four million soon. People are then going to want to write applications. I, I'd like to Thank address you. that just for a second. Uh, we've sold 65,000 developers kits for Windows NT in less than nine months. Okay, 65,000. We did an internal survey of those. 75% of them plan on delivering applications in the first 12 months. Okay, so that is a ton of 32-bit Windows applications that will be available. There's this pent-up demand in the industry for, the, for a modernized, microkernel type of approach to an operating system, purely 32-bit, no limits on the system. Uh, there's no thread limit in NT. There's just none. It doesn't exist. Uh, it's multi-user, multitasking. Uh, we have a catalog now. There's over 1,500 vendors that have already committed to delivering Windows 32-bit applications. So there's a, there'll be a lot of Windows 32-bit applications available. And I don't mean just tools. I mean basic applications and productivity tools that you use every day. The middle microphone. This, <clears throat> this is an OS2 uh, question. Uh, are the database manager uh, and the communications manager uh, differ? Do they differ in 2.1 compared to 2.0? Now, okay. OS2, Database Manager, and Communications Manager, they used to be together called Extended Services. Now we separated them. Actually, they were, yeah. They, now there's DB slash 2 and, and the CM slash 2. They function under 2.1 without change. You can go with your existing code. It functions under here. In fact, that took us a little while to get that done because there's so much function there, but it works. Okay? The front microphone. One of the biggest things that's keeping me from going to 2.1 or 2.0 uh, OS2 is IBM support. Uh, they're known to be very slow in getting things uh, fixed or answering their questions. Or Microsoft has been, I think, excels in that. What is IBM doing to yeah. alleviate that? If, yeah, thank, that, the, the, re, the remark was regarding our support. I'll tell you that I get mixed reviews. Some people say good, most people say bad. They, get, they don't get the callbacks, etc. Uh, if you read this week's PC Week, what we tried to emphasize at Comdex was that we're not just uh, IBM OS2. We're personal software products. We just hired 1,500 people within the last couple of weeks. We're having a boot camp that starts next uh, to Monday down in Orlando. 500 OS2 people for the U.S., brand new OS2 people, another 1,500 on top of that. And to tell you the truth, we brought in WordPerfect to try to teach us how to do phone support. Seriously, we really did. The last question. Okay. I say, yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is for Microsoft. But it's a good question. 
when OS2 came out, you pushed it a lot, and you had a lot of developers check it out and everything, but you dropped it. If NT does the same thing that OS2 does for y'all and Chicago succeeds, are you going to drop NT like a hot potato like you did OS2? The question was, will we drop NT? Uh, God, I hope not. Uh, the, the best way to answer that is that Microsoft is a market-driven company. Okay? No one bought OS2. And believe it or not, I was running a copy, you might have been running a copy, but for five years the product was on the market, I think it's like four years, we sold 300,000 copies. At that time, when we were negotiating with IBM, we were selling over a million units of Windows a month. Our customers demanded that we pursue Windows as a strategy. It wasn't up to, you know, we didn't think OS2 was a good product or a bad product. Our customers demanded that we do that. And that's what we will continue to do. We will follow our customers and we will be loyal to our customers. When you buy our products, you can ensure we'll be there for the long term. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. I'd like to thank both our guests. And I'd like to say I'm, I'm real disappointed in Microsoft marketing. They left uh, Doug here in a, in, a, in a real tough position, didn't, didn't really support him very well. And I, I'm, I'm just wondering if, if Microsoft marketing is getting as bad as IBM <laughs> marketing. Uh, I very much appreciate both presentations. Uh, I think you've seen the future and you've seen the finest technologies the, this America has to offer the whole world.